Okay, everybody, our um, next talk is by a young optimization guru, uh, Yin Tat Lee, who is uh, currently at MSR and soon moving to UW. Thank you. Uh, so today I will talk about some recent progress for the sampling problem. Uh, this is the last minute change of the talk because uh, in this two days we saw a lot of MC, MC and ODE, so maybe this talk fit this film more. So uh, let me first start with something unrelated, talking about my dream. My dream is if you give me a convex optimization problem, I can look at the formula and tell you what is the optimal way to solve this problem. But this dream is too far away, for example, just look at a very simple problem. We are given a graph with M edge and M vertex. We consider the mean ST problem. This, is a, this can be written as a convex problem. Then we can ask how can we solve this by just staring at this formula. And turns out there is many ways to do this. For example, you can like the previous talk, you can think about an oracle way to solve this. Uh, this is a convex form. We know how to compute gradient. Then we can, for example, uh, you can smooth this form a little bit like this. Then this is a smooth form. We can apply less soft gradient design on this. Or for example, if you don't like this is not strongly convex, you can certainly add some time here to make it strongly convex. But remember, we, our final goal is to solve the original problem. So when you add something like this, you need to uh, think about how much error you occur by smoothing that out and then do the analysis carefully. And turns out, if you try to use exact design of this, you get a running time roughly like M to 1.5. Also, for example, if you try to return the original problem as an LP, and solve it by using the Pansian software, again, you get M to 1.5. Also, you can think, oh, this one is the packing LP. How about using the latest packing LP album? And again, you will get M to 1.5. And I don't know how many methods I can tell on this. But, but you, in the certain way, the TCS way of thinking about the problem is, Eventually, what we want to understand is not a particular model. Instead, we want to solve a, a very specialized problem. But how can we solve that as fast as possible? Maybe the gradient oracle is not the only way to do this. And so in the last past few years, I have been trying to understand, uh, given a problem, what kind of oracle setting we should think about and what kind of album we should decide for that oracle setting. For example, this, uh, oh, and turns out in the last few years, much you get the result like uh, M2, much you get the result, is 12, I don't remember the year. Uh, much you get the result like M2, 10 over 7 for this. So it's at least better than all those uh, classical album for this setting, and I get a running time lock compatible, but something like this. Uh, so, more generally, you can think about the mean cost rule problem. And turns out by looking on the formula, you notice this is an LP, and this is the capacity constraint. Each row of this matrix have two on zero. Um, but just by using this fact, uh, in fact, we can solve it in M square N time better than the previous uh, specialized album for this graph problem. And here is another example as a module minimization. This is pretty popular in machine learning recently. Uh, so here, the problem we want to minimize the uh, function over all the subset. And this function satisfies the diminishing return. Namely, if you have two subset T and S, T contained in S, the benefit of adding an extra element on a larger subset is smaller than the benefit of adding an element on the smaller one. And this problem uh, is very fundamental in co combinatorial optimization. It captures a lot of problem people care. And turns out the, the two things we notice is this first thing, this problem is a complex optimization. It can extend to a hypercube. And also, the subgradient of f can be compiled in n square time by using greedy method. Just using two, these two facts, we get an n cube l from uh, faster than the previous uh, specialized l from n to the 5. Anyway, this is just uh, 
uh, try to motivate what I'm trying to do. Now, uh, uh, going back to the gym, uh, in order to understand how we given the formula, come up with an algorithm, then we need to design some operation to handle this. And turns out, uh, Gushai, Luas, and Schweifer have defined a certain type of operation which is especially useful for combinatorial optimization. Uh, we are given a common set K, he defined four different operations. Membership oracle, given an X, we want to check whether X is in the set or not. Separation oracle, given an X, we want to check uh, whether this, the X is in K or you want to find a hyperplane separate X and K. Uh, with, of, with, with oracle, given the direction, you want to find the, the, the width of the convex set along that direction, just in the C direction. And the last oracle, optimize. Instead of just computing the width, you want to find the point optimized for that direction. So recently, not really recently, a few decades ago again, uh, there, there is other oracle people study, especially by Santos. So this is a sample oracle. Given the log concave uh, distribution G, we want to sample according to G sub subject to K. And the last oracle I will talk about is integration, integrate G along K. Uh, so it turns out all of those oracles is polynomial equivalent to each other. And this is one of the major source we, how we prove a certain problem is polynomial time or not. And uh, certainly for me then, the natural question is, can we get a tight uh, equivalence between all of those problems? Uh, maybe you think those oracle is a little bit arbitrary, so I will draw a diagram for this. Uh, I need to define a losing first. For any convex function f, we define the deal of f is that formula. Also, we define one of k. Uh, the, we define for every convex set, we can relate it with a convex function which is infinity outside the set and zero inside. And turns out of those oracle can be written as those formula. So here, membership is just evaluating this function. Separation is just computing subgrading of this function. And turns out width is computing the function value of the deal. And optimization is computing the se separation of the deal. And also the integration, and there is still that. I am just repeating here. Notice the bottom, if you integrate the bottom column, you will get the first column in some sense. Sorry, too fast. Could you start again? This, this slide. Sure. So, uh, membership of is just evaluating the function. And you can prove turns out the subgradient, or you can think the gradient of that function turns out will give you a separation hyperplane. Yeah. And this is the, just the fancy deal of the function. You compute the value, turns out this gives you the width. Fancy deal of what? Of the L function. Edit function. Here, the L function is infinity outside and zero inside. Okay. And the uh, optimization is the subgradient. And the integration, what is, how is it related to L? Uh, you can return here. Uh, I, okay, I think maybe the relation is not that great. For example, this one, you can put the L inside or uh, something like this. Oh, or maybe I write in this way. Here, uh, integration is just G E negative L K is the integration, and the sampling is you sampling according to G E L K is the sampling. So if you integrate this, you get that. And um, yeah, it is not that related, but. Yeah, oh, G is the input. Yeah, yeah, but the so C is the input and X is the input. So G is any convex function? Log concave distribution. So E to the minus G is a log concave, or, or G, G? G is log concave. So, or you can return E to negative some function. Yeah, good. And 
And currently, I'm still trying to working with Santosh and LM. We believe we're close to getting a tight polyamor equivalence for the left four guy. Uh, the the main problem is to prove the lower bound. We already have the upper bound. Lower bound is really difficult for us. Uh, uh, and in some sense, you can think cores optimization is just the, the relation between separation and optimization. Uh, to also, uh, traditionally, people think those reduction alpha is pretty inefficient. For example, the the, the polynomial equivalence be, between that two classically is by ellipsoid method, and usually people think ellipsoid method is not working at all. And, and recently, we have some efficient version of ellipsoid method. Uh, uh, in fact, we have some less short type guarantee. Uh, so I think you, yeah, there is some opportunities for those type of thing, even for practical setting. And in today's talk, I will focus on how we get from membership to sampling. Yeah, so, so let me just recap the sampling problem. We're given a common set, and we want to sample upon, say, for now, I'll say that we want to sample according to uniform distribution. In the previous slides, we talked about the more general question. We are also given a log concave distribution, and then we want to sample a point according to that. Uh, why that is useful? Uh, turns out that is a very basic operation for many stuff. For example, uh, first of all, you can use this for optimization because if you know how to sample a log concave distribution, you just need to sample e to negative f, but you rescale f by a lot then. After you sample with high probability, you will get a point close to the minimum. Uh, also, it is useful for integration, counting, learning, rounding. Uh, uh, also, I think the funny thing is this is the current best way to minimize a a uh, convex function if we only have a noisy function value oracle. Uh, originally, uh, yeah, also the best way to compute volume set, volume of convex set. Uh, today I will only focus off on this problem, just sample from uniform distribution, but most of the technique can be transferred to that, and we just do that for the notation simplicity. And Originally, I promised to give this talk, so I at least give the result. And turns out that it's, uh, turns out one longitudinal application of sampling is how to solve the convex bandit. But this is a longitudinal application. There is uh, much more thing to do to get this result. Uh, this is the John Webb with Zap and Roland. So the problem setting is a little bit different. You can think this problem is a very, very worst case of convex optimization. We want to robust in uh, arbitrary laws. So the problem is like this. You can think it's a game. Each step, the adversary will choose, give you a different convex function. And you, you can choose a pawn in the unit ball. In some sense, you only want to minimize the error on the unit ball. Your point certainly will depend on some past observation. And then you will receive the loss Lx there. And that is the only information you know about the function. And then in the next one, the adversary will choose another function. And then you choose another point, and you only receive the cost there. Uh, nothing else you know about L. Uh, in order this problem to make sense, uh, we measure the performance by regret. The performance is like this. This is the sum of the cost you get from the loss function. You compare against to a fixed strategy. Uh, you minimize over x in the unit ball and some of those L. And notice, uh, because we measure the performance by this, uh, this term is kind of saying, uh, if this term is small, that means there is at least a fixed good a good fixed strategy, that means during the L form, although we almost know nothing about the L which is keep changing, we can still roughly guess where is the fixed good strategy. Uh, and this problem is difficult because imagine if the adversary in the half, in the first uh, absorption portion of the iteration, it just give you some chunky information telling you the obvious there, then you cannot focus in there because you know the adversary can move. And that's why the problem is difficult. 
uh, in this uh, problem setting, people would like to think about you want to get a regret like square t. Notice uh, the regret is sum over t. So if you talk about your average regret, then this is one over t. That is optimal, even if say the adversary always choose the same function but with some additive loss. And in particular, they care about getting a running time like, oh, this, oh, sorry, this, say, this is dimension. See, they want to get a running time like n to the thousand square t rather than n times t to two third. Uh, one motivation for this is like, for example, you are in the casino and every loss function is the linear function. You know there is one machine is better than other than then assuming you will spend all of your time on the casino, then you, this guarantee is certainly better than that. Uh, so, uh, so originally I promised to talk about this result. Uh, so is, uh, res this result is, is based on many previous results. People have been studying for this problem for that case. And by combining some of that, those results and getting some new insights, we get the first polynomial time L from on this, the previous best L from have exponential to n. Yeah, so this is the <coughs> origin promise. And during the L from, for example, one technique we need to use is sampling. That's why it's still relevant to this talk. Uh, yeah, good. So now we go back to the sampling problem. So the sampling problem turns out we need to be more specific. There is two ways to think about the sampling problem. First is the oracle setting. In the oracle setting, for example, you only have the membership oracle. You can only tell a point is in K or not. Also, you will promise you are given a point inside the set. Otherwise, you cannot find it at all. Uh, yeah. More precisely, we already promised you find a point deep inside the set. Uh, just to make sure the problem makes sense. Uh, there is another setting, is the explicit setting. Namely, the convex set is explicitly given by, say, polytop or special hedron or something you like. And in this talk, we will focus on polytop. Uh, so first of, in the talk, uh, in the first part of the talk, I will first talk about the oracle setting. Then I will talk about the explicit setting. Oh, I should remove that sentence. Uh, anyway, so the sampling problem here is the setting just to remind you. This problem is studied for a long while. Uh, in fact, this is only realized to be polynomial time in the 90s. And then the previous space is n cube. And the conjecture lower bound is n squared. The lower bound is again conjecture. We don't know that yet. Uh, that lower bound is roughly come from imagining if the convex set is uh, ellipsoid. Uh, remember, the membership of recall, each iteration only gives you one bit of information. That's why we believe it should be n square bit. Uh, but this is conjecture. And, and turns out this problem not just have a conjecture lower bound, we also have a conjecture optimal alpha. Uh, that is uh, Borwalk. The album is as simple as uh, you could try if you don't know anything about this form. So the album is this, say you start with x, each iteration you look at the ball of say radius delta around you and you sample a point inside. If the point is still inside the set, you accept this uh, sample and continue the sampling step. Otherwise you forget about the sample and do it again. So this is ball work. Uh, Notice this album is well defined for any set. It can be long convex. Uh, uh, however, if the set is long convex, the album can get checked in certain uh, side. Imagine if the set is here and you do the ball walk. If the bottom net here is very s small, then you will keep going here. And to, to measure the performance of this set, basically you just need to measure if there is some bottleneck of the set. And turns out that can be measured by isoparametric constant. Given any convex set, no, any set, we can define the isoparametric constant is this. You search over all the subset of K, and then you compute the ratio of the, wall, the area of the intercept, the boundary of the set, 
divide by the volume of the smaller side. Uh, for example, for this set, uh, the file will be large because no matter how you cut, there is no bottom net, so the file will be large. Or for example, this one, the file will be small. So what was the delta in the, the ball? Uh, delta is the step size. Yeah. Oh, this, oh, this is the yeah. boundary oh, of the so set. Previous slide. Uh, this is the oh, delta. Previous slide. Oh, delta. Yeah. That one delta. Yeah. That one is a, f that is a fixed step size during the whole L of them. Okay. Yeah. How do you? Uh, I will go to there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Turns out, uh, for any such not just convex set. Turns out the ball walk will converge in n over delta square, phi square iteration. Delta is the step size. Uh, one thing you notice is if the set is harder to cut or if the step size is larger, then it makes faster. However, you cannot set the delta too large, otherwise the failing probability is one. Then we didn't count those fail step here. And turns out I will first discuss about phi and then the delta. Uh, turns out for the isoparametric constant, uh, even for the convex set, it can be arbitrarily small uh, because this this constant is not a phi invariant. Imagine you have a set, you can scratch the set, then the, it is easy to cut. Uh, for example, uh, this convex set, the phi is just one divided by L. You cut it at the center, uh, so you need to renormalize the set such that it more look like a ball. So the way you do this is you can renormalize the set such that the covariant matrix of the set is identity. And turns out uh, we call a convex set is isotropic if it is mean zero and covariance identity. And and so turns out uh, there is one extra benefit for this renormalization. Turns out if the set is isotropic, then you can set the delta is like one over root n and you can make sure the success probability is constant. Now we put it into the film we told you before, then the ball walk will mix in n square phi square time, n square over phi square time. So what is this given a random point? Oh, uh, because the usually for math watching, uh, if you just start at any point, then you need to pay a lot of the ratio of the distance between two distributions. But because this is high dimension, the difference, the lot of the difference will be n. So if you're not given a random points in the beginning, you will pay n and n factor. There is other trick to make the Lucy square n instead of n. Yeah. Uh, what does the epsilon refer to here? Uh, the total variation between the resulting distribution and the uniform distribution. Yeah, and because this is lossy, in some sense, you can ignore that. And but if the convex set is not isotropic, <laughs> turns out there is trick to uh, to renormalize it. Basically, what you can do is by chicken and egg, you can first sample n different points in the convex set and then you compute the empirical covariant matrix and transform the space. And turns out that chicken and egg can be implemented. Uh, yeah, now we go to the... Uh, uh, so it turns out there is a conjecture is saying, the KRS conjecture say any isotropic uh, body have uh, phi is constant. Uh, that means if this is true, then the ball walls will mix in n square iteration. And this is tight for, for the ball walk, even for the hypercube. Imagine you really take the steps I want to put n. Then for any direction with high probability, you will only move by one over n. And because this is a random walk, if your step size is one over n, then you will only mix in n square step. Uh, and remember, there is an informatic conjecture lower bound. I'm still working with Santos. We're still trying to prove n squared is tight, is the lower bound for any L form. Uh, but today I will talk about the KRS conjecture a little bit, just in fact, just one slide. Uh, turns out this conjecture is well studied in pure math. Uh, for example, it has many related conjecture in uh, math. 
one conjecture is this one called slicing conjecture. Given a common set, uh, the conjecture asks, if the common set is unit volume, does there a uh, hyperping such that the, wo the slicing, the volume is constant? Uh, like that. Uh, the end conjecture is the Finchel conjecture. Uh, the conjecture is this, is saying given the common set, if it is isotropic, yes, most of the volume is lying in this fin shell. Notice the radius here is growing and, and the shell have width constant. So most of the volume is lying in a really fin shell. Uh, that conjecture is kind of really interesting to me is because, for example, if you try to solve mean, mean estimate, uh, um, mean, mean cost mass flow, the previous album, say the LP album, uh, where is this square n come from? And that square n is roughly come from the fact for any convex set, you can approximate by uh, ellipsoid in uh, this way. Say you have, uh, I will not. <laughs> Say you have a uh, convex set. Turns out you can always find ellipse is inside and if you scale the ellipse by square n, it will contain the whole ellipse. And this is how the square n come from. And this statement is way stronger than this. This is not saying common set is up. Oh, this, this only works for symmetric common set. Uh, uh, this statement is saying any common set is not just approximated by square n factor, it is approximated by one plus one over root n factor. Uh, but this is a probabilistic statement, so we don't know how to use. Uh, so this is another conjecture which I think probably is very useful for many people. This conjecture is this, given a log of k distribution and uh, uh, one Lipschitz function, I, I should remove this sentence. Uh, turns out f is concentrated around the mean of f with the error is like t, with the error is like constant with exponential probability. Uh, so, in some sense, you can think this is a, some sort of generalization of chain of bound or Levy concentration, which we use a lot in computer science. Uh, yeah, uh, anyway, to summarize, in some sense, all of those conjectures is easy to put for, for the case the conversation is uh, ellipse. And in some sense, all those conjectures is asking, is all the conversations is look like ellipse? And if they look like an ellipse, then can we say convex optimization is as easy as lin solving linear system? Uh, that is a thing I really want to get, but anyway, this is the result about KRS. So the, in the first paper, they define the uh, conjecture, they get a lower bound n to one over square n. And after uh, people found this conjecture is difficult enough, so the way you handle this is you define a simple conjecture. Uh, instead of cutting the set by any set, you only cut by ellipse. Then it turns out that quantity can be approximated by a simple formula, square n over the variance of the lump of lump square. And it turns out this is still difficult. Uh, for example, you see the first bound is one over square n times log square log n is slightly better. And after a decade of for, of effort, now we get n to negative one third. And one major breakthrough is by Eldon. Uh, he so in fact, uh, you can only search for those sets without loss of generality. He proved the phi is approximated by the sigma. Uh, in the joint work with Santos, we get n to negative one third, one fourth. Uh, yeah, in particular, this shows uh, the mixing time of ball walk is n to 2.5. Yeah, uh, one of the purpose of giving this sampling talk instead of common spending is because I've, I feel there's enough audience on MCMC here, maybe I can ask some questions. The first question I ask is, do, do we know any better way to bind the mixing time of ball walk? This is, in some sense, the simplest walk you can imagine. Uh, yeah. Sir, so um, the mixing time you had was n squared divided by this phi, right? Something, the original thing that the- Yeah, yeah. So you are saying that the phi is basically n to one half or something. So phi, phi squared is, uh, yeah, yeah. 
But you want to show that this is constant. So that yeah. 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 So I finished the Oracle setting. Now I go to the explicit setting. Uh, yeah, so naturally, you, you look at the result, n to 2.5 is way too large for, for a problem of a billion size. So we want to ask, can we do it faster if the problem is not in the Oracle setting? Uh, so yeah, the problem is again the same, except the convex set is now a point of, uh, This problem is also studied before. Uh, the previous best is the decom walk. Uh, the number of iteration is mn. Notice if m is the number of constraints and n is the number of variables. Notice if the number of constraints is roughly equal to variables, then this is n squared without assuming any conjecture. Uh, and the running time per each iteration involves solving a linear system, so you get a matrix multiplication time. Uh, and notice ball walk is n to 2.5. Each iteration only involves uh, looking on your LP ones, so it's just MN. And today I will talk about the geodesic work. Uh, we have slightly better than MN, uh, and with the same cost per each iteration. And what what important here is this is the first subquadratic L form. The funny thing is, all the previous L from the bottom neck K is the hypercube, and turns out we, I, turns out our L from for hypercube is like n to one third, but we cannot show something like that at all. Uh, we are only able to show m and zero point seven five. So, so just to motivate a little bit. Uh, what is the cost of matrix in the over inversion here? Uh, Namely, namely, if you uh, each iteration it involves sampling from a ellipse, and to sample from a ellipse, you need to solve a linear system, and the cost of solving a linear system is this. In general, if you don't want to depend on conditional number, otherwise you get something like, for example, you can respect that by conjugate gradient, then you get something else. M, what is M is the number of equation. And n is the number of variables. Um. Oh yeah. So in general, how we 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 sample if we don't know anything. Uh, in some sense, the natural way is to follow the nature, which is just bounded motion. Uh, oh, but uh, it worked really well for uh, for just uh, free space, uh, but. But the main problem is our convex set has some boundaries, so when you hit the boundary, you need to deal with that. Uh, one natural thing is to reflect when you hit the boundary, and turns out that it's super difficult to do, because imagine you are at, the set is a hypercube. Uh, if you randomly draw a point with some high probability, you will get close to every constraint by some really, some, something like one of foot n. And then when you try to do a bounded motion, you will keep hitting the constraint many, many times, even for a small step. And that's why this option is difficult to do. And the other option we are trying to do is following the decom walk idea. We try to remove the boundary by building up the space. In some sense, this is the original point of, we want to do a ch change, of, change of variable such that this now Pull up on the boundary, there is no boundary at all. So after you sample on this manifold, you just directly project down, in some sense. Uh, so however, this idea requires explicit polytope because uh, to do a random walk on this manifold, you need to first construct this manifold. That's why we need the polytope is given in the first place. And uh, so what do I mean by blowing up? Uh, so just to give a very simple example, say the convex set is the, the, the interval. Then what I want to blow up is I want to blow up to a real line. I stretch uh, the points near the boundary to infinity. This set does not have boundary anymore. So you just need to do a random walk here 
But what you notice is if you do a random walk here, you will basically drift to infinity. So this is not a uniform distribution. Uh, in fact, this is kind of, uh, oh, and in some sense, you can think this operation is like we try to distort the space such that we convert the hard constraint, the boundary, to a soft constraint. Uh, yeah, to, to describe the bow up in the general setting, I need to explain why it's a manifold. So in some sense, you can think uh, n-dimensional manifold is just like an n-dimensional surface living in a higher dimension space. Like this, this is the manifold. And at every part, there is a tangent space uh, that is just consists of all the directions starting from that point. And then for every point, there is, a, there is a inner part defined locally at that point. And that inner part is, uh, in some sense, you can think the man a manifold is like every point you, you assign a small ball here, defining how you measure the distance. And given, uh, given that unit part is useful for defining the, the length of a curve, it's just you integrate along all the derivative of the curve, but you instead of measure the long by L2, you measure by the inner part at that point. And, and also, you can divide the distance between two points. It's just the infinement along all the path, and the length of the path is measured by this length. And, and in some sense, uh, you can think what we are trying to do is generalize the ball walk. Uh, in some sense, what we want to do is instead of each step, we take the same ball. Each step, we choose a different ball depending on the starting point. So the L from is something similar like this. Each step, you look at this point, and notice the distance is measured in the, the remaining setting. Then each step, you just draw a ball in that manifold, and you sample a point here, and you repeat. Uh, notice, uh, okay. oh yeah, and what kind of manifold we, we are going to use, and turns out we use the manifold called Hessian manifold, because they are easy to come up. Uh, basically, you first come up with a convex function on your polytope. Then you divide the inner part, say u inner part with v at the point p, is just uh, the inner part compared in the Hessian at that point. So for any convex function on the point of, we have a corresponding Hessian manifold. And in particular, uh, in our analysis, we will use the log barrier function, which is used in the interval method. Uh, the formula is like this. Uh, the picture is like this. Say you are currently at x, uh, the log barrier function is just log of 1 over the distance for every constraint. Uh, this, uh, first of all, you notice this function is in deep bore up on the boundary. Uh, when you are getting closer to one boundary, one of the slack will get close to zero, so this function will bore up. And in some sense, what happens is if, for example, if you look at the ellipse at this point, then the ellipse will be really long along this direction, but very thin on this direction. Uh, so in some sense, our work will be slower when you are getting close to the boundary, but it's only slower on the direction you are going towards the boundary. <laughs> For all other dimensions, we will still go really fast. So this is the benefit of using this compared to the ball walk. You always use the ball with the same shape. Yeah. Uh, so this is the such, so this is the Deacon walk people studied before, and turns yeah turns out this is the Deacon walk. The alpha is just this. Each step you at x you look at the uh, the ball induced by the log barrier function, and you go there. I notice this alpha doesn't work if you just do this because for example if you are doing on the interval. This walk is essentially the same as bounding motion on the real line, you will drift off the boundary. So you, oh yeah, I have a picture. Uh, and so it turns out what you need to do is you do a few things step. This is standard in MCMC. So the one thing you notice is if you have a marble chain, 
If the map was checked in symmetric, then the staging distribution is uniform. So what you need to do to make a map for change symmetric is uh, instead of instead of say from x to y you use the probability x to y you use the probability minimum of x to y and y to x this makes sure this is symmetric and uh, this is very easy to implement what you do is you just sample according to some map for change then you check the probability uh, if the probability going back is way smaller, then you need to flip a con to adjust for that that problem. And, and so now we describe the previous result. The decom walk, the alpha is just this. Each step, you look at the ball induced by log bear referencing, and then you flip a con to compare the volume, and then do it accordingly. And they prove it. This algorithm take m n step, and this is the better than the previous best for the Oracle setting if m is close to n. So then, so we are trying to understand can we do a better algorithm than this? The first idea we come up with is this. Uh, notice what uh, the. One special property of the algorithm is they always sample according to an ellipse strictly inside the polytope. But if you look at the high dimension geometry, then you know usually you can enlarge the ellipse by square n factor with high probability. It's still inside the, the body. So why don't we just scale the ellipse by square n factor? And it turns out this does not work. Uh, the real problem is, uh, turns out if you do this, then the success probability will be exponentially small. Uh, you can see this just in the hypercube. Uh, imagine after you take a step, you go to there, then the volume between that two is exponentially large, so your success probability is very small. And yeah, and uh, in fact, hypercube is kind of the worst case for all the previous alpha we know. Uh, except the naive thing, you sample every coordinate independently. Uh, uh, so what we do is we try to go back to the remanence, uh, the, the continuous case. Uh, the idea is kind of similar to the email talk yesterday. Uh, uh, the, the idea is this, imagine we look at the decamp walk, but we try to take the step side test to zero and we try to understand what it will give. And if you look at the decamp walk, it is kind of special. If you start at here, although the, the ball is look like this, you have some probability sample to here. But because if you go to here, there is low probability going back, so the re, the the acceptance step will just reject those samples. So if you draw the possible y you will go to, it will not be symmetric around the point x. So there is a certain drift going towards center. And in some sense, it makes sense because if you don't do any uh, cone flipping, then your work will drift to the infinity. And this cone flipping is trying to give you a drift going back to the center. So this is kind of add with the drift to infinity issue. And if you take the step size 10 to 0, then it will tend to a stochastic differential equation. And also, the stock, so this term, so the, the stochastic differential equation is like this. Each step, you have a deterministic step, a drift towards center, and a random step depending on the ellipse you uh, are at, at that point. And it turns out that, yeah, the drift is just uh, uh, inverse of the Hessian. And it turns out, yeah, the diffusion is inverse of Hessian. And it turns out the drift have a light formula uh, by just applying this equation. So for any SDE, you can you have a corresponding diffusion equation by some formula. And uh, remember, our goal is to converge to uniform distribution. So we set zero on the left-hand side. Then you will get this. Uh, by just removing one derivative, then you will see the drift have an explicit formula of the diffusion term. Oh, pretty bad. 
Oh, how many times I? <laughs> okay, good. Uh, so, okay, I will at least finish the description of the walk. So now, literally, we have a walk like this. Uh, literally, what you could do is you take an uh, oil discretization, namely, you just think the continuous derivative as, as the difference. And uh, turns out this algorithm doesn't make sense. For example, we imagine Earth is just ma yeah, Earth is certainly a manifold. If you start at here, then if you just do the addition, you will just go to some crazy location. Uh, it doesn't make sense, especially if you look at the sphere, if you just try to take a step, you will go outside the manifold. And uh, turns out what we do is this. Imagine you start at here, you just do a step. Then you will go outside the manifold. And turns out in Riemannian manifold, there is a natural thing to do, it's called exponential map. That means you want to find the shortest path start at x with the direction on this direction, then it will go to here, it's a geodesic, so it's always on the manifold. Uh, so we get the, so we change the album by this. Instead of just do an addition, you do an exponential map, uh, shooting out a geodesic. Yeah, corresponding to Earth, then you get the, the more makes sense line. Uh, yeah, but this album still have a discretization error, so we still do the filtering step with Fibacon. Uh, but, but notice our album is very complicated because for every point you look at the, the Hessian and shoot the geodesic, then what is the probability from x to y is a crazy integral equation. Uh, we can still implement that in, uh, in, in matrix inversion time. But the next question I have for MCMC community is usually how do we avoid those filtering steps? Uh, yeah, anyway, I guess I will skip off those. One good pro pro property of geodesic is it will never leave the polytope. And in fact, we can prove uh, for any geodesic, if the direction is random, then the geodesic have length n to one fourth. So, which is pretty good. If we have this property for interior point method, we have much faster outcome for mass flow. Uh, the another second thing good about the uh, geodesic is turns out if you yeah okay okay I skip everything to the last slides. Okay yeah yeah this is pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I have now the question slides. Uh, basically, Santos and I don't have any background on OD, SD, or Riemannian geometry, so if someone knows better than us, please tell us something. And again, the problem, how to avoid filtering step. Uh, the next thing I really want to know is, for now we don't know whether KRS is true or not, then is there any general way or just for the ball walk to tell whether a walk is mixed or not? The last equation is, in some sense, you can think our walk is a mu star method, a higher order method than the Euler method. In general, it's higher order method used for SDE. The last question is, do you have other heuristic for sampling? I should know. Thank you. While the next speaker is setting up. Yeah. I mean, there's this whole set of methods for sampling on 